the Real Hustle team have raised the stakes. They've hit the world's gambling capital, Las Vegas, to pull off their most daring scams yet. On tonight's The Real Hustle Las Vegas. You can change for 100, please. Find out why this $25 stack of chips is really worth 400. I'm shocked. Absolutely. Jess is the hotel inspector from hell. And the hustlers assemble their biggest ever team to hit a Vegas casino for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Look at my chips. They look good, don't they? Rich tourists pour into Las Vegas every single day, hoping to make easy money, which is why the city is a magnet to the best con artists in the world. And so, in this series, Paul, Alex and Jess are facing their toughest challenge to date. They're hitting the most security-conscious city in the world to expose to our hidden cameras more notorious cons. All the people in this show have been hustled for real, and after being given their money back, they agreed that the footage could be shown so you can avoid being ripped off by the same scams. There are many ways to steal a car, but for a hustler, the easy way is to ask for the keys. This is the Valet Distraction. Valet parking is becoming more common all over the world. Instead of parking yourself, you hand your keys to a valet and get a ticket. The valet then parks your car for you and returns it when you need it. The hustlers have targeted this restaurant because it has a large car park, meaning that the valets can leave their post for as long as five minutes to park a car. Alex and Paul arrive in these old bangers. But if all goes to plan, they'll soon be swapping them for something a little more bling. Good evening. Thank you very much. Not bad. Not bad. Alright. Take care of that, she's a classic. Their cars are parked, but there's a problem. The post is still manned, and the other valets will be back in about four minutes. Here's Jess, problem solved. Excuse me. Sorry to bother you. I just wondered if you could help me, please. My key doesn't seem to work. Think you could just come and have a little look for me. Otherwise, I just can't go anywhere. I can't get home. I'm like pressing it like that. With the post unmanned, a couple of new valets step into cover. Well, well, tuck yourself in. Yeah. You're a disgrace to the valet profession. I think so. It's just a silver. With their blazers and badges on, the boys look the real deal. Have you got well, something? Let's try the other side. Yeah, let's try the other Jess side. Jess is deliberately using the wrong key fob to buy <laughs> Alex and Paul some time. Is it the way you point it, maybe? If Alex and Paul are going to get their new cars, then it's got to happen before the real valets return. They're in luck. How you doing? Just go ahead and self-park just now, sir. Just go ahead and self-park, thank you. Paul doesn't think the people carrier is up to scratch. Oh, <laughs> I really want to get in, I'm cold. Two more minutes. If no one comes, we're going to have to pull it off. Maybe this will suit them better. A Porsche. Hi. Good evening. 
Alex hands her a ticket. And he's off. Thanks to a blazer and badge combination, he's landed himself a £95,000 motor. Unless another car comes soon, Paul's going to be driving home in his old Mercury Tracer. This is more like it, the top of the range Cadillac Escalade. Disaster, he's self-parking. Paul is forced to think on his feet and approaches the driver. Hey sir, how are you? Um, we do the private party in tonight, but with a car like this, I can fit it right up front for you, so it's right in the front. How does that sound? You want to drive it, or we'll hold the keys for you. It's okay. If Paul can get the keys, he's home and dry. He directs him to the safest spot. Jess can't keep the valet for much longer, so Paul needs to get a move on. Perfect. I'll look after those. Don't worry about it, it's perfectly safe there. All right. With the car keys in Paul's possession, it's about to be stolen for the third time. All Paul has to do is wait until he's inside the restaurant. As Paul flees in his brand new Cadillac that's worth over £50,000, Jess uses the genuine key fob in her pocket to open her car. What did you do? And then leaves to meet up with Alex and Paul. The valet returns to his post after playing the Good Samaritan, unaware that two top-of-the-range cars have been stolen whilst his back was turned. Things are about to get worse for the valets. Here's the Porsche owner. The valet brings over the car that matches his ticket. But it's no Porsche, it's Alex's old banger. That's because Alex gave them the valet ticket for his old Honda. trying to figure out what the guy did that was here before us because we just got here and we just want to know what's going on. So it's just in the back or what? I'm not sure what he did. Hey, did use your car too? Yeah. Are you kidding me? That's not your car? What was supposed to be a romantic meal out for these couples has turned into an eye-wateringly expensive evening. The truck was parked here because he likes to keep his truck close where he can see it. So needless to say, when we come out, he of course is looking for his truck, which is not an immediate eyesight, which could happen. I mean, it could have been moved. He inquires with these gentlemen here, new shift of valet guys. So we're waiting for the police. Someone jacked it or something's going on. But... I don't know. You guys find my car? <sighs> Going crazy. It's very simple to protect yourself from this. If you're not familiar with an establishment and there aren't several valleys about, then park your car yourself.
When Vegas was run by the mob, and before regulations were in place, crooked dealers would use any method possible to cheat players and the casino. Even today, dealers still get caught trying to make some fast cash. Welcome to the Dealer Scams. The hustlers have hired this luxury casino suite to set up a private blackjack game and demonstrate what could happen if Paul was a crooked dealer working on the casino floor. The aim of blackjack is to get your cards to total more than the dealer without exceeding 21. Alex hits and busts his hand. Both the other players beat the dealer and Paul pays them off. Alex asks for change and hands over a hundred dollar chip. Paul breaks it down into twenty-five dollar chips and passes them back to Alex. The players place their bets and Paul deals out another round. Everybody stands on the hands they have, and Paul wins with 20. Even though Alex has lost two hands in a row, he's actually up over $300. And here's how. We're about to show you the Rolls Royce of dealer scams. This is a scam that has literally taken millions from casinos around the world before it was discovered. And it's incredibly clever. It requires a player and a dealer to make this work. You have a stack of $5 chips. This is the Trojan horse inside the casino. It's not a stack of chips, it's a hollow metal cup that's been painted to look exactly like a stack of $5 chips. It has a real $5 chip on top, but its purpose is to steal from this part of the tray here, the $100 chips. This is what happens. First of all, your partner needs to make a bet. Care to make a bet out? Oh yes, why not? Here we go, well, I'll bet that. Okay. It really gets interesting when Alex loses. If he loses, his cards are placed away, his bet is taken, and as I'm moving the chips around, I'll move it back into the tray here. It touches the $100 tray for just a second, but when it does, it fills up with $100 chips. Here it is again in slow motion. Back at the table and from the casino's eye in the sky, there's nothing to see. Even from the player's point of view, it just looks like Paul is moving some chips. So for a $25 bet, even though you've lost, you're about to make $400. So how do I get the cup back to Alex? Well, he could keep betting and wait until he wins and I could pass it to him that way. But there is a smarter way. Can I get some change, please? Fives, please. Certainly, sir. Yeah, there's uh, five. 25, 50, 75, 100. Perfect. Back at the game, Alex asks for change, so Paul can hand back the chip cup. Because it matches the casino chips, the players can't tell the difference, let alone the security cameras. And there it is, the chip cup with the hidden $400 about to go straight into Alex's pocket. Now, as you can see, I got the chips back and made a huge profit. There it is. There's my 400. Now, I can get those back off the table by betting the chip stack again. They momentarily go into my hand. There they are. I can bet that back again because I want to make more money. And the action of going into my pocket to take out a mobile phone, I've just dumped the chips there. Now, if we just do that 10 times in a night, that's $4,000. That's a huge profit for a little piece of metal. I'm shocked. Absolutely. I would not have seen that chip cup before because it looks like actual chips. Coming up later, the hustlers hit a casino where it hurts as they cash in on their biggest ever payday. Oh, lucky girl. <laughs> Most people do what their boss tells them. But what happens when your boss isn't who they say they are? This is the fake hotel inspector. 
Whenever you stay in a hotel, whether in Vegas or anywhere else in the world, your possessions are at risk. Guests leave cash, important documents, and all kinds of other valuables in their room. Con men know this, which is why a hotel room is in Aladdin's cave of spoils. Most hotel guests worry about maids stealing from their room when they come in to clean, but in this case, the maid is the last person to worry about. Jess is posing as a hotel inspector. She plans to walk straight into the room when the maid is cleaning and help herself to the guest's belongings. Oh, hi. hi. Sorry, I'm just inspecting the room. Do you mind if you start in here so I can just have a quick look in the bathroom? Oh, sure. Is that OK? Because she looks the part, the maid doesn't ask for ID or even question who Jess is. With the maid outside, Jess rigs the room with hidden cameras so we can watch the hit unfold. Um, just carry on that door, Lord. It's going to be two minutes. Before she can take anything, she needs to distract the maid. So she uses her lipstick to mark the bath. Excuse me. Yeah, just come in here for a second. Sure. I think you could get this mark out. Like they might have kids or something. I don't know what it is. Could you? Yeah. Think yeah you could go there, and then I'll just sort this room out, and then I'll get onto my next room. Thank you. Thank you. With the maid busy trying to remove the lipstick, Jess gets to work. She finds a laptop. I don't really know what it is. She puts it outside and goes back for more. The maid could come back in at any moment, so Jess has to work quickly. And she's gone. In under two minutes, Jess walks off with a laptop and bags containing credit cards, cash, and a couple of mobile phones. Even though Jess has suddenly disappeared, the maid carries on with her duties. She even looks in Jess's direction, but doesn't notice her making a quick getaway. The maid finishes off and leaves unaware that the room has been stripped of its valuables and that she'll become the main suspect. The guests return to their room and immediately discover that their belongings have gone. At the end of her shift, we caught up with the maid. Yes, there was a lady that was in there earlier. Um, she was checking out rooms. Hi. Hi. Sorry, I'm just inspecting the rooms. Do you mind if you start in here so I can just have a quick look in the bathroom? Oh, she didn't stay for very long. She noticed the lipstick in the bathroom. So, I got on that one. I would not assume that she would have stolen things, but anything's possible. The elements to this scam are pretty simple. You have a uniform, a name badge, a little bit of acting, but most importantly, you turn up at the right time and at the right place, and you play the part perfectly. And she also highlights a mistake, something that's been missed. So the maid is bound to try and impress and make sure that that bath is clean. We can predict that, and that's the psychology that makes all scams like this work. The hustlers are going to show you how to win drinks off your mates by using proposition bets. The prop bet makes you believe that you're onto a sure thing, but of course the hustlers always have the edge, so you don't stand a chance. So watch and learn. Alex is having a night out at a casino bar, but he doesn't intend to spend any money on drinks. 
Tyler, I've got a question for you. And in fact, everybody, you've heard of the phrase time is money, right? Okay, well, I'll show you how to make money from time. I know it sounds vague, but trust me on this. I'm gonna ask you three very simple questions, right? About your watch. If you get any of them wrong, you're gonna have to buy a round of drinks. If you get all of them right, I'll buy you guys whatever you want. A round of drinks, whatever you want. All right, do me a favor, cover your watch for me. Just cover your watch, all right? Just cover. How long have you had your watch? Uh, well, six months. Six months, so you've had it for quite a long time. You wear it every day? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Oh, listen, they're not going to be like astrophysics questions like how does it work or anything. Be, if you think they're too complicated, we'll call the whole thing off, all right? You have the choice. Uh, Ready? Uh, all right. Does your watch have a seconds hand? Yes. Okay, look at it. Have a, have a go. Yes, he's right. Okay, yes. cover it. Okay. Does your watch have the number six on it? Does it have six or does it have a Roman numeral or a dot? Doesn't have the number six. No. Have a look. No, he's right. He's right again. Cover it. Okay, ready for your first question? Yes. What time is it? <laughs> <laughs> what time is it on your watch? Now you've looked at it three times now. Eight. Ten. No! Okay, it's nine o'clock! Okay. And so by focusing the Mark's attention on minor details about his watch, he misses the bigger picture, what the time is. This drinks are on you, I'll have another Corona. <laughs>which earlier she smuggled into the casino. Yay! The team play a few rounds of blackjack. How much I lost in that last round. <laughs> okay. I told you. <laughs> Trust me, no. With everyone settled, the duplicate shoe is passed under the table to Alex. Here it is again from under the table. This woman's job is crucial. She has to block the view of this man, the pit boss, who is responsible for spotting cheats. Yeah. Now Alex has the shoe, all they need is for the dealer to look away from the table. Steph, what are you doing? You can't go in there. Yeah, look at this. Don't go. Are they supposed to do that? They're supposed to be here. <laughs> what are you doing? And it's done. They've switched the shoe. But what actually happened? Alex signals to the guys at the end of the table to change some cash for chips. It's a cue for these girls to cause a distraction. Steph, what are you doing? You can't go in there. Acting drunk, one girl enters the casino pit, which is strictly off limits to members of the public. They draw the pit boss away from the table. The dealer only looks away for a second, but that's all it takes. Yeah, we can't be in here. You're gonna get so much trouble. We're gonna get out. 
<laughs> Whilst the dealer is distracted, Paul snatches the casino shoe and passes it to his date. Alex instantly replaces it with their own shoe. And the casino shoe is put back in the handbag. No wonder Alex is looking pleased with himself. With the shoe now switched, the hustlers can play with their own stacked decks and are guaranteed to win big. But with possible surveillance footage, plus the shoe in the bag as evidence, the boys need to make a sharp exit and allow the final member of the team to clean up. And here she is. It's Jess and an accomplice. Trust me, Doug. We? Thank you. Right. <laughs> Let's get out of here as quickly as possible before we get arrested. All the players at the table now know the exact order of the cards. If the spare chair gets filled, one of the team will leave, so the card order remains the same. Even if security rewind the tapes, Jess can't be connected with the shoe switch. The first hand out, and what a surprise, Jess hits two blackjacks. Thank you very much. Who'd have thought it? Two more blackjacks. <laughs> I'm a lucky girl. <laughs> Those green chips worth $25 each, and the black ones, $100. As the next few hands are played, Jess's winning streak continues. And the other members of the team are not doing badly either. You're looking at my chips? Yeah. Can't get rid of that. Look good, don't they? <laughs> Very nice. That stack of chips won't go unnoticed for long by casino security, and so Jess needs to get out of there sharp. I'm done, are you done? Okay. I'm going to have a problem carrying these. If she can escape in time, she'll have virtually emptied the dealer's tray and made hundreds of thousands of dollars for the team. Nice it's for you, cheers. Good luck, boys. Enjoy yourself. Bye. Mission accomplished. To pull off a cooler move like this in this day and age, you would almost have to have someone in on it on the inside. A dealer, maybe a dealer and a pit boss, but preferably a dealer, a pit boss, and someone in surveillance. Because you can make 250, 300,000 on a move like this. It's not that difficult to throw a little money to the dealer, to the pit boss, or to someone in security to look the other way at the right time. Whether enjoying a break in Vegas or anywhere else, don't forget that looks can often be deceiving. And remember, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. For more information on the making of The Real Hustle Las Vegas, visit the BBC3 website. It's all shiny and new tonight. We're looking pretty spanky, you must admit. Up next, it's new models they're after of the lingerie variety this time in our very first episode of Find Me The Face. And that's followed later at nine by brand new drama by the name of Boo Action.